Welcome to the History Road. You join us here on a chilly but sunny day in November and we're here uh, just junction of Tooley Street and uh, what's the name of this? Battle Bridge Lane. Here we are and today we're going to be looking at the story behind this plaque here. Now on the 22nd of June 1861 one of the biggest fires that ever occurred in London happened here in the warehouses between Cotton Wharf and Hayes Wharf as it was known at the time. And I'm here to tell you all about that story. Welcome to London. Quickly on the scene that day were the London Fire Engine Establishment. And by 6pm there were 14 fire engines, um, including several steam engines and a floating engine on the river. And they were all tackling the blaze. By the late evening, the fire stretched from London Bridge to the Custom House. Sadly, the wharves were all closely packed and loaded with lots and lots of flammable goods. The fire spreading quickly throughout the warehouses and the iron fire doors, which should have separated many of the storage rooms, have been left open. It is believed, if they were closed, as recommended by James Braidwood, the superintendent of the London Fire Engine Establishment, that many would have burnt out and avoided disaster. The inferno was so hot that most of the firefighters couldn't get close enough to actually extinguish a fire and the amount of water they had to put onto the blaze. One of the other reasons the fire burned so fiercely was because the Thames was at low tide and those employed to pump out the water to try and put out the fire just didn't have enough water there to do that job. As with most of these things in London, it attracted a crowd and it provided so much attention that for many people, they estimated a crowd of about 30,000 spectators were mainly on London Bridge watching the fire. It also proved to be an opportunity for street vendors to provide cheap refreshments and they recorded a roaring trade during those few days that people were watching the fire. The local pubs remained open throughout the night, even though it was forbidden back then by an Act of Parliament. Superintendent Braidwood realised that his firefighters were becoming fatigued fighting this great conflagration. So he ordered nips of brandy to be given to them to uh, perk them up. Sadly, whilst he was doing this, uh, a wall fell down and he was buried alive. Well, I say buried alive, he died almost instantly. Sadly though, it was three days before they actually recovered his body. Upon hearing the news of the superintendent's passing, the Queen wrote in her own personal diary, it made one very sad. By this time, Fire engines from all over the country had arrived to help extinguish the fire, including many private fire brigades. It actually took two weeks to extinguish the fire fully. The estimated cost of the damage back then was two million pounds, and that would have been around about 166 million in today's cash. The total cost for employing people to pump the water manually to, from the Thames to the engine cost around about 1,100 pounds, and that's about 90,000 in today's money. James Braidwood's funeral took place on the 29th of June, 1861 at Abney Park Cemetery in Stoke Newington. He was buried next to his stepson, who was also a firefighter who died five years previously. His funeral procession was over one and a half miles long and along the procession, people lined the route and shops closed as a mark of respect. Now, what was the outcome of this fire? Well. Since the Great Fire of London, 1666, insurance companies actually employed the firefighters. If your house or your company was insured, they would come and try and put out the fire for you. But because of this fire, it was thought that firefighters should be part of the government, or at least local government. And that's when the Firefighters Act was passed, and it was in 1866 the London Fire Brigade was finally instituted. It's a sad story, but it did have a happy outcome we did get the London Fire Brigade from it. Thank you very much for watching. We do hope you enjoy these videos on YouTube and on TikTok. And uh, if you want to see what we do outside of these videos, please go to historylord.co.uk and see about a walking tour of London or have a look for Last Line Films, which is on YouTube and TikTok now. And that's James's YouTube channel and he's behind the camera. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Stay safe.